this is the UV Max installation video. There's particular different models depending on what your flow rate would be and depending on your water quality. This particular model that we're installing today is the E4. The first thing that we want to do is we want to open the box and kind of lay everything out, pull out your instruction manual and the different components. So get some latex gloves and then pull this out of the packaging. Be careful not to break it. And then we're going to want to take both of these items and put them to the side. Remove all the packing off the chamber. And you'll hear a spring moving around in there. That spring is to help put tension on the bulb when you insert it. So it's okay if you hear something rattling around there, that's, that's normal. So first and foremost, we're going to mount the chamber. Um, when you mount the chamber, you want to keep a couple things in mind. First of all, when you mount it, if you're going to mount it vertical or horizontal, either way will work. We would prefer horizontal or vertical if you can put it this way, just so that way the water comes in from the bottom, swirls around and comes out the top, out the side. Um, what you need to keep in mind is you're going to have to replace this bulb once a year or every 9,000 hours. So you don't want to put anything over the top of this where you can't slide the bulb back out. Or you don't want to put it so close to the ceiling that you can't get the bulb out. Because then you're going to have to remove this whole chamber every time to change the bulb. So typically we, we mount these lower to the ground and we mount them in a vertical position. So once we know where we're going to put it, then what I usually do is take a level and a sharpie and draw a center line so I know exactly where level is. That way we're not cocked one way or the other. Um, it doesn't necessarily inhibit the, the performance of the UV, but it will make it tougher to plumb if we're doing something like this. So we try to make it true and level if we can. So we just want to give a couple marks where we're going to install our clamps. Now to give us an idea where to mount the mounting clamps. When you mount the mounting clamps, you try to put the actual screw that you have to tighten down in a position that you can get to it easy. You wouldn't want to put this into a corner or something where you can't get to it to tighten it down. Um, and then use your reference marks that you made before so you know about where to mount it on the, on the line that you drew. Um, depending on where you mount this depends on the fastener that you would use. If you have a drywall, covered wall, and you want to mount it securely, we would recommend that you put some type of board or something between the studs and then mount to the board. That way you have a nice secure mounting option. Once you have the clamps on there, you're just going to loosen the clamps a little bit and slide your chamber down through the clamps. Today we're going to use a standard stainless steel union which would normally we would bond the pipe between the top and the bottom but because we are using plastic PEX pipe today bonding isn't near as important. So first of all we're going to Teflon tape these and we're going to install our unions on the top and the bottom. Teflon tape these fittings before you mount the chamber or at least make sure that you uh, have it loose so you can spin it around to get these ports Teflon taped. And then when I install the union, I always use the male side of the union and put on the chamber. And then for plumbing purposes, I'm just going to spin these back on there so we can start running our plumbing. Now, it's as simple as putting a pipe in and a pipe out, but when it comes to UV chambers, I like to use what's called a three-valve bypass. And what this allows you to do is if you have a leak or you need to serve this in any way, you can bypass this particular part of, the, of your treatment system and still have water going to your various locations while this is being serviced. 
First, we're going to install our male adapter fittings on the other ends of our unions, both sides. And these are the quick connect shark bike fittings. You can see that there's actually a insert in the middle that will go in the middle of the pipe when you push it in there. Um, we're going to Teflon tape these liberally and also make sure that they're nice and tight in this union. When you buy PEX pipe from us, it's going to come in four foot lengths with two one foot lengths. Um, this is due to shipping and typically these one foot lengths are usable in a lot of situations for short nipples and things like that. And these are the tubing cutters that we have that we would sell um, on our website. So we can go ahead and take this apart. We're going to start plumbing now, so the first thing I'm going to do is get my pipes over with a T and we're going to put our union or our valves in. So what we need to do first is cut a short nipple so we can put our shutoff valves in. The shutoff valves will also be qu quick connect on both sides. So first of all, I'll push this all the way in where it goes. We're going to line up our shutoff valve. And, you know, depending on the placement of this valve, like you wouldn't want to place it where it's in your way if you have to take anything apart. So it would probably be a better idea to place it this way. Now, with these shark bite fittings, the fitting itself is going to come back into the fitting all the way to the shoulder. So when you cut it, use that as your measuring point. Use our tool, put it right on the mark. Cut your pipe off. Now we can slide our shark bike fitting, our shark bike valve that is, in place. We're going to do the same thing at the, at the bottom. We're going to cut a nipple and an elbow and bring it over so we can line up our fittings as well. Now that we have our shutoff valves at the top and the bottom, we're going to want to put an interconnect between the two with another shutoff valve. And that's how we can bypass the system. Now typically your inlet pipe would come in and would go into the T right here and then out through the system. And this line would be shut off. But if we need to go and bypass, then that's what we would do. So, once you get your inlet over here, then we can do a short piece to your T. And then we're going to do a short piece to the T at the top. Now you're going to want to install your third union in this pipe. That's what gives you the three valve bypass and I'll show you how that works in a minute. So find some place in the center point here, cut your piping. Then measure your final piece. Now, the inlet plumbing normally would come in the bottom here. And then your outlet plumbing would come out the top here.
Okay, so now that we have this plumbed in, I can kind of show you how the, the bypass works. When your levers are in line with the pipe, that means they're on. Okay, so what we would want to do is, is in a normal service situation, we would shut our bypass valve off. What this is going to do is the incoming water is going to go in here, but it can't go through here because we have the valve shut off. That allows the water to go through the chamber, back out of the top open valve, and then out, and it still can't go this way because this valve shut off. Now, if you have any kind of leak or anything else, then what we would do is we would shut these two. and open the third. Now, water that comes in will go here and stop and has to come up through here. It can't go there and stop, so it comes through. So we bypass the whole system. So in this bypass position, now we have the ability to actually take the UV chamber apart or whatever we need to do, and we still have water service going out to the home. Now, once this is all plumbed in and you have everything set the way you want it, this plumbing would need to be secured. You know, we have it loose here for this video, but you want this plumbing to be secured. You don't want it moving or hanging. You don't want stress hanging on this. You want all this to be secured nice and tight. Then we're going to go back and we're going to tighten these unions. And you want to take a couple pairs of channel locks and don't be afraid to tighten them down tight, depending on which type of union you're using. Not obviously plastic, you don't want to break. Once we have the plum plumbing complete and we have everything secured and tight, then we're going to mount our ballast and it has a bracket that will slide off that we're going to mount to the wall. Now, what we want to do is keep in mind, we don't want this down here and the main reason why is because now if anything drips, it leaks on it and burns up the ballast. We want it above the plumbing as much as possible, but we don't want to put it over top of the bulb chamber so we can't get the bulb out. So for, th for this application, I'm going to mount it basically right up in here. Now you can use a level and everything or, or, you know, and your proper fasteners to mount this actual bracket. Once your bracket is mounted, then you can slide your ballast into the bracket and it's securely mounted to the wall. Now we're going to install the bulb in the chamber. To do this, again, you want to put your rubber gloves on. We don't want to touch anything here. This is called a bulb sleeve combo. It's all together in one part. So, and if you look, you have a O-ring at the top. This O-ring is what seals this in the chamber. So, we're going to put it in here and it'll actually thread into place and the O-ring will seal it inside the chamber. Now, keep in mind, you have this spring in here, so you'll feel this kind of touch the spring when you go down there, and that's normal. That's, we want that spring on there for tension, because without that spring, water can make this flip back and forth and break. So that spring holds it true within the chamber. Now, once the bulb is in place, before we hook any of the electronics up, now would be when we would put water to the system and make sure we don't have any leaks. Because if we have leaks, we want to fix them now before we start plugging in this ballast and other things and, and have an actual electrical problem. So once we know we don't have any leaks anywhere and everything's secured, then we can attach the actual cord from the ballast to the bulb. Once you have the bulb attached and in place, you can slide the cover back over it and you can see the cover will s snap into these little tabs here. Now the two additional wires when you pull the the cover off of it are eyelet connectors and those are what we're going to ground to the case here so we can remove the screw from the ground lug on the case and we're going to stick it through both these eyelets. Make sure you don't cross thread this, it should spin all the way down without a problem. If it's not spinning down, then you may have it cross threaded. So you'll take the supplied power cord and you can see it's similar to a computer or a desktop monitor or something like that. And we're going to put it in the actual ballast on the end out here. And make sure you push it all the way in. And then now that this is all the way plugged in, 
we can plug this into a 110 outlet. Now, when you plug this in, you want this in a constantly energized 110 outlet. The bulb will stay on 24 hours a day and it's going to do that for 9,000 hours. We want that to stay on. If we were to switch this every time the water turned on and off, there'd be an opportunity for some untreated water to be in the chamber, first of all, but also the on and off of these particular UV bulbs would destroy the element prematurely and it would become you know, a situation where you're replacing bulbs too frequently. Once so, you plug it in, it'll go through a, a, a little check pattern, you'll hear some beeps, and then you'll see 365 show up on the actual ballast. And what you'll notice is, is every 24 hour period from the time that you plug this in, that number will slowly decrease. And as it decreases down, it's going to give you a warning when it's time to change that bulb. Like I said, it's 9,000 hours or 365 days a year. We have a green light that is showing that the ballast is okay and everything's working good there. And then we have a green light on our chamber showing that the bulb is good and it's lit up and, and working properly. If you ever have problems, you'll see differences in these lights. This particular button is your bulb reset button. So after 365 days, we put our new bulb in place. Once everything's back together and we have no leaks and we hook everything up, then you would push and hold this reset button for five seconds and it would reset this time to three, six, or these days to 365. Now, let's say you go over 365 days. This is going to give you an audible alarm as well as a discolored light for the bulb. To silence the alarm, you can use this particular button to silence the alarm. But after so long without any kind of action taken, it'll, it'll start to make noise again. So this is not a temporary, or it's a temporary basically alarm silence, but you still need to address the problem that was shown. If you look in your manual, on page 15, there's some troubleshooting guides, and they also explain what these lights mean. Now, for this particular system, there's an additional light to the side, and this would be for an intensity monitor. This particular unit is not equipped with an intensity monitor, but some UVs from Trojan have that, and that's why you see that here. If you don't have a UV monitor hooked to it, then this will stay out. You won't see any light come on at all here. And it's explained here as well. This completes the installation of the UV Max UV light. Um, like I said, periodically check for your indicator lights, make sure they remain green, and then watch your days countdown, and when you get close to time, you can give us a call and reorder your bulb sleeve combo so you're ready to replace it. If you have any other questions or concerns, you can give us a call or visit our website. Our phone number is 1-800-608-8792. Thanks.